Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan and thanks so much for coming to the channel. This is my 32 gallon uh, long from SR Aquaristic. It was the first aquarium I set up in the fish room here in Chicago. And it's uh, going along really, really well, maybe too well. Uh, this hobby, sometimes uh, it seems like overnight you have a growth spurt and everything is just intensely bigger and more robust and flourishing than you remember it from the night before. And that's sort of the phenomenon with this particular tank. Uh, every plant, look at this dwarf sedge, it's basically a carpet and it goes deep into the back. Look at that. I mean, uh, I need to pull it and cut it this is a piece of water sprite that was just a little floating in it bit and it got trapped in the driftwood there and now it's a bunch. Um, you, can, you can see the frog bit. Now I've taken a bunch of that out uh, in advance of filming this video and when I was doing that I saw what I'm talking about now and just decided to film for you. Uh, it's a, it's, it flirts with being a problem, but it's the definition of a high-class problem when your plants, like the steroids and repens, uh, is growing to the sky, but yet still carpeting strong at the bottom. I mean, best of both worlds. In theory, like the sag here, I need to cut, trim, pull, cut, trim, pull, replant. Um, there's a couple stems of Ludwigia repens. I think that's what this plant is here and here. Those are tops from cuttings, from tops, from cuttings, from tops, from cuttings. Uh, this is Hipparides, I believe I'm saying that right. Uh, and those are just tops that I've uh, stuffed back in the corner. You see the Java fern, you see the Hygrophilia pinnifata uh, here. And I uh, cut a few pieces to give uh, to my mother in the tank that I'm setting up for her. In the back I have, uh, behind these I didn't even mention them. Sorry guys, all these long pin white cloud minnows, mountain minnows. Uh, I have Valisidaria and that's a wall. I put in a little bit of pogo, min, pogo stem and octopus back in the corner by, there it is, boom, by the outflow for the canister filter. Here's a little bit of pothos. I actually took a pleco cave and made a suction cup uh, do-it-yourself thing uh, to accommodate this pothos cutting. Seems counterintuitive to add more plants and, and here by the way are more pothos, a different variety growing out of a more traditional plastic overhang. Um, like I was saying it seems counterintuitive to be adding plants when you've got uh, an explosion of plants uh, you know, but as an as an addict and an OCD guy and an aquarium keeper, if you're any of those things in a combination like I am, uh, no explanation necessary. I'm delighted at this tank, but I know I'm going to have to get in there with the pruning shears. Uh, these white cloud mountain minnows, I haven't had a death. Uh, which is an odd way of describing them, but they've been in here now almost, what, eight months maybe? I still have the super fat ones that won't drop eggs, but they seem happy, they look beautiful, and I'm giving them their best life. They could stand for more real estate, and it seems like just last night there was a ton more swimming room, uh, which is how I started this video. It was like overnight, uh, I look at it, with fresh eyes or something and boom it's a jungle i mean i don't know if this is filming the way i'm looking at it through the camera but it almost looks like a surrealistic painting there's so much plant life in here uh, and that's you know one of the super joys of this hobby i added an air stone um, one of these really cool ones from Hyger that's like a flat disc that sits on the bottom and that was to, um, well, add oxygen to the water, obviously, and create more turbulence because uh, in a long tank, even with a strong Oase filter kicking it out from there across the top of the veil, you can see it's already um, pretty much 
muted. I'm going to need to probably just uh, clean the pre-filter as well as uh, all the debris from the inflow pipe to get a stronger outflow. But even if it were strong, uh, by the time you get to the back end here, uh, it's pretty diluted. And I didn't want, I don't like stagnant water. I mean, some kinds of fish and plants appreciate it, but I don't find it conducive to a positive experience for uh, the fish and myself personally. Um, the substrate and most of uh, this aquarium is free of problem algae. I've had that in here. I had filamentous algae. I treated that and as soon as it was rectified, I got blackbeard algae in particular on this driftwood, but that's been treated and now you just see sort of the remnants, which almost looks just like ancient moss. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but right now, knock on wood, I don't have algae growing. I have everything else growing and uh, robust plant life will circumvent algae growth or, or mitigate it if not it just wins the battle. Algae is a, a great opponent for plants, especially when you first start your aquarium. It can win if you're not careful. But once you get plant growth like this, it absorbs all the nutrients um, more potently than uh, algae can. And so it will win the battle, which is why one of the many reasons why you should always have live plants and lots of them. But the question in here is, uh, do I have lots times 10? Do I need to get in there and do a trim? I might just live with the jungle effect a little bit longer. What do you guys think? Um, again, when I look at this video after filming, it might not look as intensely beautiful as it does right now. But right now, I feel like even though I know I'm supposed to trim, especially like this sag there and the, the sturge and repens, I know I'm supposed to, but I just, I just don't want to yet. And I guess it's my prerogative, but what do you guys think? All right, let me know in the comments. Um, any questions, I'm happy to answer. Again, thanks for coming to the channel. Always keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.